We're very excited in the University of Michigan Symphony Band to present a concert that we think is very unique among all of our concerts, and that is on Tuesday, November 21st in Hill Auditorium at 8 p.m. We will present a concert we are calling Celebrating the American Experience with Bolkem and Bernstein. Ann Arbor is the home of one of the American treasures in the music scene, and that is William Bolkem. Bill moved here in the 60s and taught composition for many years. He's won a Pulitzer Prize. He's won every award a composer can win, and his music is performed worldwide. As he retired from the faculty here at the School of Music, Theater, and Dance, he and his wife, Joan Morris, have traveled the world doing a lot of early American songs that were popular songs, printed and distributed as sheet music. They found a lot of those in archives, brought them back to life, and they've recorded volumes of CDs that have really become a, a museum, if you will, a treasure trove of American life over many years. And we hold them as icons of what it means to be an artist. We're doing two Bolkan pieces on this concert. The first is an arrangement of four cabaret songs. You know, Bill has volumes of cabaret songs and he and Joan have made a huge impact uh, on American song. So for this particular concert, Bill arranged four of them so that we could present a, really a significant part of his artistic legacy. The trombone concerto was written originally for the New York Philharmonic and for Joe Alessi. I was asked by the New York Philharmonic to do a trombone concerto for Joseph Alessi, who is a principal trombonist and a world-class player who is admired and revered by every trombonist in the earth. So, of course, I was very excited to do that. This is a real tour de force for the trombone. It's not trombone gimmicks. It's very musically and technically demanding. It is difficult because there's, you have to go in and out of the high range and low range pretty quickly. So you have to be flexible that way. But it has some really nice melodies, especially in the second movement. There's a wonderful blues. And the connection to Bernstein is very much that they both use the high and low of music. They have street music, they have jazz, they have blues, they have gospel. All these things come together, even in classical forms, to make a sound that's unique to both individuals, but also unique to the American spirit. In the 40s, the famous big band leader Woody Herman and his band, which was called the Thundering Herd, set out to commission uh, pieces from a lot of classical composers to write a piece for clarinet solo and his big band. And Bernstein was commissioned to write a piece which turned into prelude, fugue, and riffs. However, the big band disbanded and it was not premiered by Woody Herman yet it was premiered by the uh, Benny Goodman Band in the early 50s. We were privileged to have Anthony McGill, the principal clarinetist of the New York Philharmonic, be the soloist on Bernstein's Prelude, Fugue, and Riffs. Many people may not know his name, but they would recognize his performance from an Obama inauguration. He played brilliantly and received wide acclaim for his public presentation in a very cold afternoon. We are about to experience a wonderful residency with the New York Philharmonic. The New York Philharmonic will play three concerts in Hill Auditorium, but many of the stars of the orchestra will be doing master classes and presentations, and a number of our students will be participating in side-by-side -side concerts as part of that residency. To work with the fine students here, it's an honor, a great honor. There's a real life difference about being a Michigan student that's evidenced in projects like this New York Philharmonic residency. As the university has celebrated its bicentennial, the symphony band commissioned a number of pieces to celebrate not only our past, but our future. And we're going to premiere one of those pieces as part of this very special concert. Carlos Simon is completing his doctorate here at the university. He brings a unique voice to his music and particularly the influence of his ancestors as African-American pastors in Southern gospel churches his great-great-grandfather, his great-grandfather, his grandfather, and his father have all been pastors in this tradition. So the piece is entitled Amen, and it's three movements that are interconnected, and it takes you from the beginning of the church service to the end of the church service in 12 quick minutes. And what one realizes when you hear this piece is how much the gospel influence is present in American life. And there's a correlation between the, the gospel feel of Carlos's piece and the second movement of Bill's trombone concerto entitled Blues. So we're not just celebrating the past, we are in this concert celebrating the future. And that future is very much in the hands of the terrific young people who make up the membership of the University of Michigan Symphony Band.